Hello and welcome back to um, Back to the Future with me, Darklair. Let's just check that there's nothing we need to say to him. What am I supposed to do with this number? Oh, yep, yeah, I remember now. Okay, so what about I found your notebook? This really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Um, what am I supposed to do with this number? How do you remember this phone number after 50 years? It's a mnemonic for a dirty punchline I learned what I am. Nope. Didn't mean to say that, I will. Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Bird to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. <laughs> right. Um. Where did DeLorean come from? Yeah, go on. Let's Where get all this detail up. The last time I saw it, it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Riff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... ...is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. What were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out of print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. Oh, it's a small world. <laughs> no, okay. Enough of that, right. Uh, I really can't be asked with all this. Let's do this one, and then we'll leave it. Edna Strickland. Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. Right. Okay. So. Hang in there, What we need to do. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Well, he's not going to be hanging, is he? He's going to be bulleted. Anyway. Um. Right. So we've got to find that diner. Oh, here it is, soup kitchen even, not diner. By the way, um, because I don't know what quality that of drunken video I made yesterday was like, um, I'm really happy that England won fucking Grand Slam. So, well done England! Woo! It is my dad. In this cowboy hat. McFly! Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The, the fuck? What kind of cheesy line is that? Just getting some soup! <laughs> what a fucking juke! I don't know why I went rushing in. What a joke, eh? What a fucking joke, eh? Fucking hell. Would you? 
Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right. I really don't like his voice. What are you looking at, punk? I am kind of mean. Eyes on the soup, kid. Well, well, what? What are you still doing here? <laughs> Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes. That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, ah. You're a fucking grown man. Don't come out until Christ. You fucking mong. What if you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers? I dumped that wimp into the lake. Hey, anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Hmm, idea. Um. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. I was gonna get him to ring it, but the phone's actually here, so it's fine. What the fuck is wrong with his teeth? Brown results. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is Young Master, is young Master Wayne. Why do we fall, Master Wayne? So we can get back up again. Doc never told me you worked at the courthouse. At the courthouse, right? Okay. Over we go to the courthouse. Where is the courthouse? It's that one. Yeah, I think it is. What are you doing? Oh yeah. I hate it when bloody third person things do that. So you're holding down a button because you're running one way. And then it fucking... Uh, it just makes you go a different fucking way. Oh, oh never mind. I'm, <laughs> I'm too, like, hungover to fucking, you know. Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers. See, he's court. like nerdy and dorky, but he's not got an annoying voice. Judge Brown? Doc. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown. But I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, also, now we have two names because we've got Harry and we've got Michael. By Harry, I mean when we talk to Edna. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me. I'm your friend. <coughs> I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What are you doing? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated. Very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the legal eagle act. I got something more important for you to do. Yeah, that never comes off well. I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Did your dad tell you that? Yep. Every morning. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before ten. Why are you so happy about that? How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my Pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Well, you have a secret to hide that you're actually interested in science. Sounds like you're a little scared. Oh, shit. Scared of my... No. I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? 
You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. No, 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 no. Stop, stop. Come on, wait up a minute. You again. Don't worry, I'm a scientist too. I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> no fucking idea, laddie. I don't fucking know who the fuck knows anyway. Fucking hell. Like, fucking... Okay, so now we need to go over to the fucking uh, jail and just see, you know, like, that he's, um, complete. Oh, yeah, that's another thing, which is, I've been reminded of. For some reason, I FaceTimed, um, Josh, or you might know him as Iverbag. Basically, the guy who I'm usually, well, the guy, if I'm with someone in a video, it will be. There's been one video, it's been someone else, but I was... I was speaking to him on, um, oh shit, on FaceTime, and I was just, 